Welcome back to the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV, and thank you for staying with us. We do not take lightly that undeterred love and support that you show us on a daily, weekday basis. My name is Romy Busiku. Dr. John Paul Vagala, an obstetrician and gynecologist, is already here to talk about the benefits of early antenatal care for our mothers, our pregnant mothers in that regard. If you got pregnant in April, yes, and you didn't get antenatal care within that month, you didn't get it in May, you didn't get it in June, and we are in June. July and you're grappling with the lockdown, this is a conversation that should largely sharpen your ears and your eyes because Bagala has a lot of information in that regard. A very good morning, sir. Very good morning, Chief. When we talk about early antenatal care, what exactly do we mean? Antenatal care is uh, programmed care that we offer to uh, a, pregnant, a pregnant mother. Enlighten me. To ensure that uh, the outcomes of pregnancy uh, for the baby, not the mother, and the family are, are good and satisfactory. Mm. Go ahead. So it becomes very, very important. The, the main reason why uh, I'm here, and, and, and thanks to NTV mm -hmm. uh, for hosting me this morning, is to really look at uh, why early antenatal care, because our statistics show that current uh, antenatal uh, attendance is at 60%. Mm. We should be able to reach 90 or 100%. Indeed. And uh, considering that pregnancy, uh, your, the, some incidents that happen that are unexpected. Why are we at 60% and what will it take to, for us to get to 90%? So there is a lot of sensitization that we have to do mm. uh, uh, within the community and one of them is, is me sitting here and, and talking to the public why okay. a pregnant mother should visit. Kickstart uh, with the benefits. So th there are various benefits of antenatal care and one uh, depending on the stage of pregnancy. Mm. Of course we encourage mothers. Now, uh, we have revised our uh, uh, arrangement for antenatal mm. care, mm. And, and we encourage mothers to go for the eight contact visits. Mm. So, uh, the first visit is within the first 12, 12 weeks of, of, of pregnancy, and that's very, very important. Mm. So, it, enable us, it enables us to uh, prepare uh, uh, the mother for pregnancy. One, we, we have, for the first-time mothers, it's, it's quite a strange uh, experience to be pregnant sometimes mm. because the body changes. There are lots of body changes that happen. So they, they need to be psychologically and physically mm. be prepared. We have to screen these mothers for any... Uh, Hypertension, uh, preeclampsia and enclampsia. The non-communicable diseases, oh, just yeah, as yeah. you're putting. Mm -hmm. But also you have the communicable diseases. Talk of HIV, talk of malaria, talk mm -hmm. of syphilis. Mm -hmm. So those are Anemia. sexually transmitted. Exactly. So the sexually transmitted diseases become very important. And, and you just talked about uh, anemia, mm. which is very, very critical because with uh, postpartum hemorrhage, Indeed. the bleeding after giving birth, yes. contributing uh, over 36% of, of the mothers that we lose, it becomes mm. very important for us to screen them early. If the mother is quite anemic, then we start them on the necessary medication to ensure that we bring their blood levels a bit up to be compensate any losses. We that, do that have happen. alarming levels of mothers being killed or dying during birth. Uh, 336 mothers die per every 100,000 live births. Mm. And the Constitution the Court had to, the court actually had to come out and compel government to actually step up its budget for health. That was, mm, was it uh, around April? Yes. So that's where we are right now. Why are we losing so many mothers? So there are different reasons that really contribute mm. uh, to that. Uh, and of course, we, we, we thank government to really uh, for coming up and uh, 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 boosting the health sector because that, that funding, that boosting funding is very, very necessary. Mm. But uh, as, as I mentioned, the leading cause of maternal deaths is mm. postpartum hemorrhage. And, and that's Yet we have no blood. In our there is a crisis right now, mm. of course, but uh, the National Blood Bank is, uh, is working tirelessly mm. to really ensure that we have uh, uh, blood availed. But you also have the other leading cause of mortality uh, amongst mothers, which are the hypertensive disorders yes. uh, of pregnancy, and that contributes around 18%. So these big killers, the big elephants, if we may call them, the, the other one is, of course, sepsis, but not at the scale of these first two. So the preparation of mothers, mm. the screening of mothers, the initiation of the necessary interventions early enough, and also the mothers planning quite appropriately their bath mm. becomes very, very important. Mothers knowing what danger sign do I have so that I should be able to rush quickly to the mm. health facility and mitigate early enough for any adverse events that may come out of uh, my delivery yes. or pregnancy it becomes very, very important. And that stems from beginning early, uh, uh, early antenatal care. Dr. John Paul Bagala is an obstetrician and gynecologist, and we are having this conversation largely centered around early antenatal care. If you encountered a one 
Romeo Busuku or Elvis Kulubazi, in January of this year, things happened. Now around March, April, you got pregnant. But if you haven't seen a doctor or a medical health center in that regard, you might end up with complications before you give birth. But before the uh, first 12 weeks, you need to ensure that you go to a medical facility. Now we do know what challenges you are grappling with. There is a lockdown. You can't leave your home and stuff like that. But then we want you to know that you really, really, really need to go for antenatal, child, uh, antenatal care so that you can actually um, arrest that situation and you give birth to a very, very healthy baby in that regard. Jo Dr. John Pobagala, depression and malnutrition are other two factors that have also been touted as possible killers of our mothers during pregnancy. And uh, they are so silent, never mentioned about. What do you make of this? Uh, there is malnutrition and depression. Yeah, th there is a deliberate effort. Of, of course, as, as we mentioned, uh, th th these are some of uh, some ignored uh, areas, uh, depression, and, and in this case, postpartum depression. You might have seen a story mm. of uh, a mother who delivered a dead baby and uh, she fell from uh, one of the facilities, which was very, very unfortunate. Uh, the screening of these mothers during antenatal care for possibilities or any risks of postpartum depression becomes very, very important. Yes. And that has been integrated within our, our cascade of care. Uh, for antenatal care. Mm. Now, of course, we, we've, we've uh, midwives in our different health uh, care facilities, from health center threes, health center fours, the uh, general hospitals or district hospitals and regional referral hospitals, are really now ramping up that effort to ensure that that mental health screening uh, amongst mothers, considering the increase in cases, is, is done quite extensively. Now, the other bit is, of course, malnutrition. Yes, it, it's, it's quite evident that uh, when a mother gets pregnant, the, the demand uh, for nutrients increases because you're carrying two people in one. Mm. So, uh, and still within uh, uh, the ANC uh, uh, lessons, mm. we, we counsel mothers on what diet are you supposed to take. And, and, and we definitely counsel them on what uh, portions, what proportions uh, are you supposed to have uh, for which kind of uh, foods. And you and I, John Pobagala, know very well that during the onset of this 42-day lockdown and whatever is happening as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, such luxuries are unattainable at this point in time. And do you think the COVID-19 pandemic is adding on to the distress of the mothers? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, we don't ignore the, the adverse effect mm. of COVID. Uh, and it's a, the effect is cross-cutting. So uh, to the pregnant mothers, to the HIV patients, the malaria uh, uh, kids, so th there is that cross-cutting effect mm. across board. But also the Ministry of Health has uh, put up something we're calling continuity of essential services, uh, which is chaired by uh, the Director of Curative Services. Mm. And that continuity of essential services has put together a framework to enable that there is continued intervention in all these potential uh, issues or uh, potential adverse events that may result across board, in including uh, for pregnant mothers as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you're aware, th there is a green pass that was uh, uh, granted to pregnant mothers to be able mm -hmm. to access transport and be able to reach out to their nearest healthcare facility to continue with their uh, antenatal visits. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely that enables that counseling the screening to continue mm. if, if, if the mother is really going down a dead path of, 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 of nutrition, then they are able to be pulled up. Mm. And the, the economic implication of, of, of COVID-19 is never underestimated, but mm. there is also deliberate effort to ensure that from the health perspective, that is mitigated. And, and we definitely thank government that it was able to recognize that and allow mothers to access it. All right, care. let's explore the ramifications that will arise from the fact that a mother did not visit an antenatal care clinic or hospital within the first 12 weeks. What immediate ramification would arise from that? So, the, 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 of course, uh, one, uh, within the first 12 weeks, it enables the mother, one, confirm that she's pregnant, two, to confirm how many babies she's carrying. We, we, have seen, we have seen cases where a mother comes to deliver and she has twins, but she thought she had one, one, one child. Mm. So it, it resulted from the mother not uh, being screened or missing her relevant sessions. Mm. If a mother has any aspects of, of, of bleeding, mm. uh, whether she's uh, having uh, a pregnancy that is almost coming out, and she hasn't been part of this, this program, it becomes very, very hard for her. Sometimes when this bleeding comes, uh, comes through, there are interventions that we do mm. to prevent further progress of losing a particular pregnancy. Mm. And the earlier we intervene, 
the, the higher the chances of us uh, saving that pregnancy. Mm. If, if we don't intervene quite early, then the chances of losing that pregnancy are quite adverse. Mm -hmm. The other bit that you talked about is the issue of screening for, for, for anemia, which is very critical. Mm -hmm. The issue of nutrition, counseling the mother on what foods you're supposed to take, but also not forgetting that there are mothers that get pregnant when they're smoking, when they're taking alcohol. Mm -hmm. There are some other uh, hazardous and uh, uh, behaviors that uh, we, we, we have to counsel the mother on uh, so that they, they should be discontinued. So we support them to discontinue certain uh, behaviors. Su some behaviors that mm. may endanger the growth of the baby. During the 12 weeks. During the 12 mm. weeks. Because the 12 weeks is when the baby is forming. And it's the most, most important time mm. for us to ensure that nothing risky for any mother who is taking uh, self-prescribed mm. medication. At that age, within the 12 weeks, we have to be very cautious. And, mm. and even us. We, we try to be very, very slow on every single medicine that we give to any mother within the 12 weeks. So it's a very, very sensitive time, and it's a core foundation of any pregnancy. So it's a very, very important period to us as the obstetricians and, and uh, as the mother. And that's why we emphasize that within the 12 weeks, please come see us. All right, let's talk about the dangers during and after pregnancy. So, so let's talk about the dangers, signs uh, during and after the pregnancy. So, so during pregnancy, of course, if a mother sees any bleeding, that's a danger sign. If a mother see, has uh, any persistent headaches, mm. that's a danger Nausea. sign. If, if a mother has nausea, yes, mm. that's a danger sign. It's because of the physiology of, uh, of the body trying to adjust mm. to that pregnancy, and we have to manage them. Mm. If they are vomiting, throwing out quite uh, repeatedly, mm. Uh, th th there are adverse effects that may come out of that. Mm -hmm. If a mother has just pains, abnormal abdominal pains, mm -hmm. if a mother is passing urine and they are feeling pain, those are danger signs mm -hmm. that uh, would necessitate us to, to, to screen her. So w what we are essentially looking out uh, for here is does the mother have any communicable diseases? which are the infectious mm. diseases? Does the mother have any non-communicable diseases, which are the hypertension diabetes? Because they, they are also uh, quite horrible when it comes to the uh, forming baby. So those danger signs become very important. And we encourage any mother, if you see any of those signs that I've listed uh, below, please rush to your nearest healthcare facility. Mm. And, and the other piece, uh, the other bit as well, Romeo, is uh, for mothers really, when they are visiting, when they are performing the antenatal visits, it becomes very important mm. for, for them to know where am I going to deliver from? Mm. What am I going to go with? Uh, as I and go another important question, has the lockdown limited antenatal care visits for our mothers? Uh, there is no limitation because, one, uh, pregnant mothers... Do you think it has affected the visits? It hasn't affected mm. the visit at all. And, and the reason is that there is a green pass Indeed. to the mothers, the pregnant mothers, provided you have your documentation, mm. plus also the health workers. The okay. health workers are able to access the health facilities yes. and offer the service. That's and also the pregnant mothers are able to move from their home states to the healthcare facilities. Indeed. Let's talk about the vaccination. So many people are talking that uh, if you are pregnant and you get any of these uh, vaccines, yes, you could be risking your life. But then I have John Paul Abagala here to just set the record straight. Mm -hmm. Vaccines and pregnancy correlation to any risks yeah so as we are all aware that uh, COVID is quite a new mm. disease and a lot of research and studying has really gone into this disease how it affects uh, the different uh, uh, individuals plus also the pregnant mothers all right so regarding the vaccine uh, there is the studies that have been done show no adverse effects to they the, show to no the adverse effects. No to the pregnant adverse mother. effects to That's the pregnant amazing. mother, the That's baby. That's amazing news. Uh, uh, once they go, so we yeah. encourage pregnant mothers. And although what what has been really uh, what we have noticed in managing pregnant women uh, that uh, one the vaccine is very protective, but also uh, pregnant mothers who really get any signs of COVID, you have to really get to your healthcare facility quickly mm -hmm. because it's been really seen from the patients we have managed and the uh, statistics that we have that pregnancy is one of the risks for adverse disease of COVID. And with that, we've come to the end of this conversation. John Paul Vagala, thank you very much for coming through. Thank you very much. Indeed and indeed, to you who has been watching Morning at NTV from 6.30 a.m. up to now, thank you for that undeterred love and support. We do not take it lightly. My name is Romy Busigo. Let's interface tomorrow, same time. Good morning.